Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match. Now it's a Don, I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are just in a match between Fruity and Masper that was just played, I think, yesterday. On Scary Land. Which is like Fairyland, but with more blood. I mean, that's basically it. Also, more spirals. Like, it's sort of a Nightmare Before Christmas type thing. Huh. I think it works. Anyway. Yeah, Fruity with the rovers, and so is Masper. Rovers being... I mean, rovers are a pretty solid factor. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna dissuade these players from going for rovers, especially in a map like this. It is fairly flat. Actually, even much more so than Fairyland. I mean, notice right here... Like, this is... This on Fairyland is another ramp. But on Scary Land is basically flat. Like, Center Ridge is basically flat. Most of the map is basically flat. It's a little bit hilly, but not to the same degree that it is in Fairyland. Yeah, you can see it, it's practically flat all the way through. So it makes a lot of sense to go for rovers or tanks. Which is exactly what both Masper and Fruity were thinking. Though neither player looks like they're going to be able to get some rating in. It would appear this is going to be pretty well just your standard macro... Oh, standard macro game. Scaryland is not a macro map, but it is going to be, you know, mid-game-ish type thing. Five to ten minutes getting some serious fights in, that kind of thing. Not looking to be a quick match. Which I know sounds weird. Like, five to ten minutes? How is that not a quick match? It's like, well, okay, five to ten minutes for the first major battles. Not five to ten minutes for the entire game. Although Fruity actually being kind of slow with their expansions. Masper, much more on the ball here. The Mason, along with their commanders, setting up metal extractors. Fruity, on the other hand, far more concerned about making sure their energy economy is all set up first, which I get the sentiment, but at the same time, if you're not actively reclaiming, it doesn't matter all that much. And the only reclaim here is also energy-based, so you can actually get away with a lot more metal than energy on this map specifically, and in general, early on. Ooh, that's, that is a dead Scorcher if and only if Rudy recognizes that and goes in. Fortunately, one Scorcher kind of got in front of the other there. Oh, and the mace is down. Oh. Oh, that, that's got to hurt. Masper running away with the expansions now. I mean, thankfully, there's a second Mason over to the southeast for Fruity, but still, that's, that's a lot. Masper already 8 metal per second ahead, already grabbing the center of the map. Fruity hasn't even finished taking this, taking the metal extractors that are basically natural to them. It's, and not to mention Masper coming in with even more of a salt force. Fruity is not having a good day. Tell you that much. Going for Geo though. Very quickly going for Geo. I'm surprised Fruity is that concerned about energy. I mean, granted, if they manage to maintain their position in the mid game, they do have a good, they have a really strong position going forward. It's just getting to that point is proven to be very challenging. I mean, they've lost two Mason, or one Mason, possibly. No, they saved one. They saved one. They lost a Mason, though. There's still still a blow, but it's not going to be the biggest blow. Mason able to go around the south side of the map, take some more metal extractors, and that, that's good. That being said, though, another Mason really could be used to take the north side, or at least take the metal extractors over here. Because that is not looking so great there for Fruity. Again, Masper does have the advantage. Like, that just has to be acknowledged. Masper, they are running away with it. They're starting to, anyway. Fruity at least does have the reclaim to work with. For for now, that'll open things up a, bit, a little bit. It's not the worst thing in the world, but yeah. Fruity is kind of falling behind. Masper... Still going straight up for Scorchers, though. Just trying to win on numbers. Possibly trying to hit multiple signs at once, but definitely trying to win on numbers. Well, given that spread, that does look pretty threatening. Ripper for Fruity. Makes sense. Not sure the unit density is quite high enough to make it really work, but I can understand why you'd go for that. Like, given the unit density, I'd almost feel like Fences are a better choice. But the Ripper will scale pretty well into the mid-game. 
So it's a reasonably strong choice. It's just going to be a little bit... It might be a little difficult to get in a position where it needs to be. Still, though, it is working. It is, it is creating defense. It is forcing the Scorchers back, so Masper can't just run roughshod over Fruity's base. And that is the key thing. That is the thing that Fruity wants to make sure of. But again, the problem isn't whether or not Masper is currently running roughshod over Fruity's base. It's whether they'll be able to in the future. And so far, Fruity's actually... They're catching up. Economically speaking, they're pretty close. Overdrive has been really making things up for them. That Geo Plant... That Geo Plant is actually the reason why Fruity's been able to work at a reasonably even pace right now. So I've got to hand it to Fruity. They were, they have some pretty good thinking there. I mean, it's definitely more of a defensive strategy that's not easy to scale into the mid to late game. Or rather, into the late game. Into the mid game, it's fine, though. Because again, Fruity doesn't have to worry about building power plants across the map. They can build just... They can just throw down pylons, get a bunch of overdrive, and then Masper all of a sudden, despite having more map control, is not actually getting ahead on economy. Sadly, though, currently only one pylon in play with only two metal extractors being overdriven. <laughs> well, I guess. Sorry, four being overdriven because of the one's over the top as well. Being said, this is where the... This is where the Ripper is really coming in. The unit entities have gotten high enough for it to really work out, and that defense is paying off. Top of that, I'm really liking the use of just small groups hanging out with the constructors. Saving the day as well. And there it is. Two Rippers. Two Rippers is more than enough. Though, that being said, this is still really risky. That pylon is going to go down. The Geoplant's going to go down too. Okay, never mind. Masper. Masper found the Achilles heel and has stabbed it. Thrown an arrow right into it. And that is going to... Okay, that's two different things. Pretty sure that Achilles' heel was taken up by an arrow. Anyhow, the... Shot an arrow right into Fruity's Achilles heel. That being said, though, Masper losing their commander in trade. It's four metal per second. That's all their stored metal. It's a lot of metal going to waste there. While Fruity, on the other hand, oh, their energy... I mean, they can't rebuild that without reclaiming it, but they are wasting a lot of reclaim. Well, presence of mind to rebuild the pylon, but really it's almost like if you could build... I don't know what you could even build on top of that, because right now, Fruity is... I'm having a hard time really keeping up with production at this point. Though, smartly, are reclaiming. They are reclaiming power. A few more characters get some power reclaim. Unfortunately, losing the Metal Lake Rogers over to the southeast. Masper now with a solid lead with the Geo of their own as well. Not really afraid of the overdrive coming in from Fruity. Well, 3D forced to rebuild the Geo plant, not able to rebuild the rest of their forces. I'm a little surprised it's still been mass scorches from Masper, though. I guess they're relying entirely on raiding. They do have ra Ravagers coming in a bit later, but it's not quite what I would expect. Still, though, Fruity working to rebuild that Geo plant. And I'm liking the reclaim of the trees, though. This is what I was talking about earlier as a way of kind of getting Fruity, or keeping Fruity's economy going in case anything happens, and wasn't quite what I expected, but yeah, that geothermal plant going down definitely is a thing that happened that Fruity is able to compensate for. At least for now, and long enough that they can maintain the metal. Still, though, Fruity might want to get some pylons going, because again, Masper's got that set up. Like, they have the pylons going. Oh, these two aren't connected, though. Okay, they mostly have them connected. A little bit iffy placement. But it's still enough. Masper's still, again, they're way ahead in economy. Their production... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Their production is actually behind Fruities. Their economy is stronger, but they only have one caretaker. They're only pushing 20 metal per second into the factory. So all this metal is going to waste. Fruity, on the other hand, they have three caretakers, 40 metal per second in the factory. All they're depending on is energy, which they now have. So once they rebuild metal or get some reclaim or whatever, they are going to be actually very strongly able to get through this. And bear in mind that Fruity's the only one with at late game four or mid game force. Like Masper is going mass scorched. They have some Ravagers coming in, but only a few. Fruity, on the other hand, has a really nice mix of forces. They have the Scorchers to get rid of the Ravagers. They have the Rippers 
Help get rid of Scorchers as they come in. Now the Patch is just for extra little bit of just damage here and there. Now providing a bit of support, thinning out the army. But yeah, that is actually pretty notable. Not to mention this expansion over to the eastern side of the map got completely wiped out, which means Fruity and Masper are again relatively even. Though Masper now getting the caretakers they needed, their production will be able to completely ramp up. And again, I remain surprised that Fruity is not piloning all these metal extractors. Or rebuilding the ones that were over to the south as well. There's there is a massive opening there. I mean, it's clear that Fruity is much more concerned about taking out Masper's expansions than rebuilding their own. And to be fair, they will take out Masper's expansions. There's no doubt about it. Oh, also, the question about... Claw Mines do not have a timeout period. They are active until they get triggered. So, yeah, if you lay a bunch of mines down, that is a defended area for as long as a unit hasn't gone through them. So, Fruity, taking out that metal, taking out that, actually taking a lot of the reclaim sources, and as a result, getting the advantage on Masper economically for, I think, the first time this game. And rebuilding metal extractors over to the south, exactly what makes a lot of sense in the circumstances. And Masper, getting kind of desperate here, going for some rippers themselves. Not sure if it's too little too late, though. I mean, just, you know, six rippers versus one ripper. Actually, nine rippers versus one ripper. Okay, that's... Even more than that, eleven rippers, because why... Oh, no, two of those... No, they don't. They do not belong to Fruity. So... Or, sorry, to Masper. They belong to Fruity. So... This looks like this might actually be the last ditch attempt from Masper here to raid things out. Fruity still with that economic advantage. Getting the advanced radar up, because why not? But really, it's just double checking to see where they can attack, where they should attack. And that radar is up. And Fruity can see everything. They're exactly where Masper is situated, exactly where they're going to attack. Masper, on the other hand, hasn't done anything of the sort, so they are kind of clueless. They have basic radar, but that's about it. They have no idea what's going on inside of Fruity's base. Whereas Fruity can see through Masper. They basically have the map hack going. So Fruity knows full well. I think it's expand. They can go wherever they want. They don't have to worry about anything. And again, I would recommend picking up some pile or setting on some pylons, getting some overdrive, but. Eh, this isn't too bad. I mean, it's it's not a waste. It's just a bit more efficient if you overdrive more metal extractors. Or have them all in the same grid. Because, like, these... Like, yes, excess energy is causing the overdrive to happen, but only these two metal extractors are being driven by the geothermal. This one's only, These two are only being driven by the one solar. These two are only being driven by the five solars. Connect them all together, they all drive each other. And the way that overdrive formula works, it's way more efficient. Like, overdrive has pretty quick diminishing returns, so you want to have as many metal extractors driven as possible. That's always the best way of doing things. Though, speaking of efficiency, though, these forces from Masper getting caught out. Fruity, of course, knows exactly where they are. Takes full advantage of that fact. Might lose the Mason in the process, though. If Masper focuses... Oh, no, never mind. Actually, losing the Mason thanks to a missed shot off the Ripper. A bit unfortunate. Not able to take that expansion as efficiently, but still. Does do the job. And the Ripper's over to this northwest side of the map. Wiping out Ravagers with no real trouble. Just the numbers, really. And, of course, support Scorches can't do anything against that. Because that's because Ripper's a splash damage, so yeah, good luck with that. Fruity just wiping out everything Masper has, despite again, Masper. It's all attrition. Like, it's 3,000 metal advantage on attrition for Fruity right now. And that's really what's paying off. These Ravagers, sorry, these Rippers have been absolutely insane when it comes to their efficiency. Like, they're consistently making cost. 
And with that, Fruity able to take half the map. Getting a Moho plan as well. Finally getting some extra pylons going. Setting up that grid a bit more efficiently. And on top of the Moho Geo, once, you know, that gets going. Fortunately, you can't use the Moho Geo's power to power the Moho, to power the construction of the Moho Geo, but, or the advanced Geo plant. But you do have, sorry, Moho Geo is a historical term from Total Annihilation. The advanced geothermal plant. This is your K okay term. Yeah, the advanced geo plant. They are. You have to wait a little bit. You might actually have to wait a bit too much. Unfortunately, having reclaimed all of the trees in their immediate vicinity, still some trees around here, but not. Do these have any energy in them? I don't think they do. Oh, one of them does. Okay. So they can get some energy, speed things up a little bit. I mean, the faster that advanced Geo plant comes online, the better it is for Fruity's economy. But again, Fruity, they are still... They're doing okay. It's just, unfortunately, don't have a whole lot of power infrastructure, save for that, that Geo. And whatever trees they can reclaim. Which aren't very many. Actually, Fruity... Fruity losing a lot of their force here. Fortunately, not being able to keep on production, they also lost a lot of their rippers. That's leaving them pretty vulnerable here. I mean, the advanced geo plant is almost ready. There's no ETA in it. 93%, 94%. Oof. Really bad time for Eastall. Thankfully, they opened things up. Masper, or rather, they cleared things up. So Masper doesn't have a whole lot of army they can use to really threaten things. But that was a gamble. Fruity finally getting it back. Should be able to get a fair amount of overdrive off that as well once the energy is fully stacked up. Because that, that is how it works. It has to be basically maxed out before the overdrive really kicks in. And it has really kicked in. Well, 14 metal extra on the overdrive. And enough energy to last for the entire game provided that this advanced geo plant does not ever die. Which might be a big gift, considering that Masters managed to rebuild their entire army. Fruity, still though, 50 metal per second into the factory, will- or 55 actually, with the- with the Mason here. We'll be able to rebuild quickly, but it's a matter of positioning, and it's a matter of making sure they don't lose too much of the metal extractors they've taken in the meantime. Rippers are still in position to stop it, but unfortunately, those numbers haven't thinned out to the point that the Scorchers might not need to respect them anymore. Remains to be seen, though. These Scorchers are going in for a bit of a suicide mission. It, I think it's worth it. But that's... That's not... That's hard to gauge. Actually, the Scorchers might be able to escape. It might have been worth it. No, never mind. They're, they're going in hard. Trying to get rid of the Rippers. Oh, that is not efficient. No, that was not worth it. Taking the Metal Extractors, that was worth it. Losing the rest of the Scorchers to not escaping and trying to instead take out a Ripper. Yeah, that wasted everything. Fruity's forces have managed to catch up. They've regrouped all the ones that have just been built. And now it's just a matter of pushing from here. I mean, it's a bit of a threat from the back lines, but other than that, Fruity essentially has nothing to worry about. They can just keep pushing in here, and that is that. Fruity's answer to this is... Honestly, kind of suspect. Sorry, not Fruity's. Yeah, Masper's answer is honestly kind of suspect. Fruity's answer is actually pretty solid. It's it's airtight, but Masper's is suspect. I mean, Rapture double checking though. Again, Fruity can build up here. A couple of metal extractors. Get some lotuses. Get a pylon like here-ish. In this general area. Oops. Like. Yeah, get a pylon right here. There you go. That's perfect. Still, the Masper's Force is actually... I mean, they're being efficient, but... Sorry, Root Freeze Force is being efficient. Masper's Forces are being threatening more by being everywhere. But again, they're everywhere until they run into a few Rippers and then die. So, they're everywhere until they're not. And when they're not, they're very not. As we've seen time and time again across the map. And this is, once again, another one of the situations I don't think Masper quite realizes 
Scorchers are really inefficient against level or against rippers. Like four or five scorchers can kill a ripper on their own if the scorchers rush the ripper and get that close range damage. But once you have two or more rippers, it's almost impossible to rush them with scorchers. Like the scorchers just die too quickly. It's not really worth it. Ravagers are okay, but again, you need the numbers for that. And that's not what Masper has. They've been throwing forces. They've been going throwing good forces after bad, and it's leaving Fruity with a massive advantage on top of their economic advantage. I mean, throughout this entire game, Fruity has had an attrition advantage. So it's not just the economics. Like, Fruity has the value advantage. Fruity has a value killed advantage consistently throughout the entire game. Even though metal income wise, Masper and Fruity were neck and neck, and Masper was mostly ahead, and Masper's been ahead on metal used. That's how significant the attrition disparity is between the two players. And as a result, we're seeing right now, again, all these scorches coming in here. Rippers tearing them to pieces. Fruity doesn't even have most of their forces here, and they're still winning this fight. Just because Rippers are that efficient. Because of course they are. Against Scorchers, against Mask Scorchers, they are that efficient. I'm honestly kind of shocked Masper's taking this long to switch over to Ripper Ravager. Like, this is the standard mid-game army for Rovers. And Masper, 19 minutes into the game, after having lost, gone from two-thirds map control down to basically just their base and natural, they are now switching over to Ripper Ravager. But they're running Ripper Ravager into Ripper... into, well... Ripper Badger Scorcher. I mean, the Scorchers are going to have a bit of a hard time as the Rippers... Like, Fruity Scorchers are going to have a hard time against Masper's Rippers, yes. But then you have the Badgers as additional support. And Impalers, because why not? Although I think the Impalers are... I think the Impaler is a little bit sus. I mean... Uh, yeah, that Impaler is not going to work if it's running forward like that. Nope, that is a dead Impaler. That is not how you run the Impaler. I mean, I was trying to kill off the Radar Tower, but that's... No, it's not how it works. Still, though, Fruity has more forces. Fruity has possibly better spread of forces. I mean, the Rippers do good work against Ravagers. But if Masper gets enough Ravagers, this could turn around. Like, Fruity wouldn't be able to really rush in with their own Scorchers. The Badgers are doing okay, but the Scorchers get taken out by the Rippers, and Fruity's Rippers can't take out the Ravagers that efficiently. Like, they're okay against Ravagers, but honestly not that great. So if Fruity takes out Masper's Rippers, the Scorchers have a chance, but otherwise, those Ravagers, they all have room to move around. It's its slow, but we are seeing the Ravagers are actually gaining quite a bit of ground. Oh, and the pylon was built here. Hooray! Good job, Fruity. You're getting that overdrive going. It's like full on. The whole grid is connected. No, except for except over here. That's about to be connected. Oh, yeah, and over here, but that's under heavy assault, so I wouldn't really... I, that, that, I wouldn't build a pylon there. In fact, you're about to lose that entire base, but... No, Valiant Ever. Actually, one of the Rippers goes down, too. But yeah, overall, I'd say that Masper does have a stronger assault force, but Fruity, with all the Badgers, able to get solid defense. And as long as there aren't any Rippers in the force, then the Scorchers can start ripping everything apart. Taking out all the Ravagers that have been built up. And Masper... Ah, going for the plate for Scorcher. Wait, I was going for Mass Scorchers again. I don't know why. They didn't kill that many Rippers. Like, Fruity has five Rippers in play. One of them under construction, but the other four are on the front lines. Or soon to be on the front lines. Two of them are on the, like, directly on the front lines, the rest are approaching. Like, Masper didn't thin out Fruity's Ripper Force that much. Well, at the same time, Fruity... Maybe I actually spoke too soon about Assault Force. I mean, it's not a direct Assault Force, but as far as getting rid of stack defenses goes, that's a lot of artillery. And there's not a lot that's actually contesting it. The artillery, again, is doing a decent job just thinning out the lines here. Because, you know, if the Ravagers go down, the Rippers can destroy... Like, Ripper numbers are all that matters. If the Rippers go down, the Scorchers can wipe out the Ravagers. And Ripper numbers are definitely advantage fruity. Masper does not have the numbers to work with. Especially if Fruity has fully connected their grid. Everything's over... Oh, except for this one metal extractor. But everything, everything else is overdriven. Quite significantly, too. 13 metal over... I mean, that overdrive... 
if it weren't for that, they'd be like, and the reclaim, they would be even with Masper right now. But no, that, that overdrive and reclaim, that is giving Fruity such an economic advantage. And combined with the nearly 10,000 metal attrition advantage right now, Fruity... The only issue is, is, again, their assault force is not super strong. They can't just push in easily and take it. Like they're relying heavily on artillery as an assault force, which does slow things down. I mean, again, that's pretty much the entire point of Especially on artillery like the Claw. Sorry, like the Badger, the projectiles, the Claw. Is that when you're laying minefields like that, you are slowing down the game pace. That is kind of the point. Like, you're, you're preventing raids. You're slowing down what your opponent can really build up. You're not trying to push to win. You're trying to just slow... Well, you're pushing, but you're slowly grabbing territory as you go. And that's exactly what Fruity is doing, but it's working out for them just fine. They have an economic advantage. An increasing economic advantage. They don't need to win quickly. They just need to not throw the game away. If they do that, then they're fine. And that's exactly what they've done, and they are absolutely fine as Masper throws in the towel, and Fruity takes the game with very solid attrition play. Like, honestly, from that first Ripper onwards, really, from the stats, from the first Ripper onwards, Fruity had the advantage in terms of value killed. Like, they never had to worry about that, I think. Yeah, there was a tiny, tiny point where Masper had a slight attrition advantage. Then it was full-on Fruity, and that is going to be that for this match as apparently i have to double check what my cat needs right now so we'll be back in just a moment after i have double checked my cat's needs and also loaded up the next game after a short break which will be a match between dan warrior and bloa two players who were pretty active in the tournament as well again this is kind of the Watching some people who were playing games following the tournament. Really curious how Blow is playing. They really improved throughout the tournament. And, I want to, and Dan Warrior as well. I want to see how they're playing out now. Anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 